Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and let's, let's continue with the PHP code now. So, um, as I said before, this, um, this, this form over here submits everything to itself and does not submit to any other file. So in order to check whether it is submitting to itself, I have a few conditions. So the first condition is if is set dollar underscore post submit. Now if this entire thing is true, it means that the form has been submitted. If it is not true, it means that it has not been submitted and none of this code has to run. As you saw in the in the example I showed when you first open the text file or you first open the the application in a browser, nothing really happens. Only when you submit does something happen, right? So that this is where this comes in. So is set basically check if it is submitted and the post value between submit is true or false. So if it is true, this code will be executed. If it is false, nothing will be executed. So yeah, so the first line over here is get the posted string value from the email field. So here we have the email field, right? Here the text box. So now we have to check or we have to basically get it. And this works on name principles as we discussed earlier in the, in the JavaScript form. This works in the name principles. And I want to say dollar $email equal to dollar underscore post email. So now the email ID, which is verified, by the way, as in, you know, with regular expressions, is actually the value of dollar $email. So then we have one more thing to do. Generate a random hash with the unique and ran function. So basically, uh, this function is unique ID, but I tell you, never ever use it. This is just an example. It's not very secure unless, you know, you have MD5 over here, but still. I mean, don't really use it in a, in, in a real world application. This is an example. You can generate random code by using any pr way you prefer. There are lots of hash functions out there. SH4, SH3. I think SH4 is not there. SH3 is there. Um, so you have a random code over here, which is a random code generated. Now, this is a ran, ran function generates a value between 0 and ran max. Ran max is a value you can get by, you know, typing the function get ran max and then parentheses. And then unique ID takes this value and creates a unique string, and MD5 takes that string and, and hashes it to a particular string. You know, hash values are used in checksums. Never use them for password protection or this kind of verification. Okay, never. There are, there are special specialized functions for doing those things. This is just an example. I can't stress how much that is important. So random code. So that random code will be that value which we saw earlier. We put in the URL and you know, print it out. So here we echo what the email is and what the random code is. Um, dollar random code, dollar email. Echo it on the screen to s for other people to see. And then we need to connect to our, you know, our server. So in order to connect to our server, we have DB host, which is the local host. And you can type in what, whatever, you know, like website you have or, you know, whatever host on the internet you have, whatever server you have. And then the username and the password. My username is db user. My password is db password. It's not a big deal. It's very simple actually. Um, and you can type whatever you want. So here we have a connect to the database, and then we uh, dollar connect, dollar con equal to mysql underscore connect. And here we pass in the host, the user, and the password. This returns a connection, in which what, by which we're going to execute our you know mysql commands. And if the connection is not established, if it's not true then die which means uh, eliminate the application stop it and print out the error what what I, what actually happened basically okay that's about it so then you have to select the database here we have test as you saw in the first tutorial test is our database which we're going to use uh, mysql underscore select underscore db takes a string i've written everything out uh, so you know there's no problem then you have S a dollar sql which is a string so you know for this is going to be our sql query which we are going to execute insert into confirmation table the values random code which we generated and the email id as you saw in the example you know exactly what is happening here so you know even if i'm saying it it's very simple to understand then you have a dollar result set equal to mysql query so here we are actually executing the query and mysql underscore query the sql query which we wrote over here and the connection by which the, the pathway to which you have the the query should be executed so yeah this returns after it is executed it returns a result set which contains something or doesn't contain anything okay 
So if it contains something, then there is something to do. So after you are or you finish you execute the query, the MySQL connection is no longer needed. Okay, so you can you know MySQL also close close the connection to save resources, although it's not a lot of resources, but still some resources. And then you check if this result set has returned something. If it has a true value, if it has something, which means it is true, something has returned, it is executed, uh, you give the values over here. So basically, uh, $2 will be the email, the email to which the, which the client gave you, the client's email ID. Here is a subject. The subject will be your confirmation link is here. Here will be the header. The header is basically extra information which is provided in order to you know, safeguard the email to the client header information it's not if you want to research on actual what the mailing thing does go to the you know the, the the documentation and read it out it's very simple it's not very hard to understand then you have the message with the confirmation code so dollar message your confirmation link is um, and then message click on this link to, this is basically dot equal to is basically used in order to you know concatenate stuff in PHP if you know PHP you know what it does um, to concatenate two strings okay concatenate so here we have the entire link so this the, this will be the link uh, this part over here if, if you see over here I've, I've written down some stuff host address then you have a slash confirmation processing page the page which you are going to process stuff on if I do this it'll be more clear and uh, if I do this it will be even more clear so you have the host name the confirmation page which is confirmed with PHP here the confirmation page is written out here then the random code name equal to the random variable so this thing why is this written out in this fashion that is a mystery which we'll see in the next tutorial which is based on the on the confirmation of PHP which actually happens in there and until then I will leave you with it so then you actually send the mail okay once you send the mail you have a few things in there to subject and message and header so to is basically to whom you're sending subject is what the subject is message is what the message is and in the message you have the the link to where the verification stuff is written out and then here is the header yeah so then you have if if it's actually successful and uh, you know then your sent mail is your your confirmation link has been sent to your email address and if the sent mail is false, it cannot send it. Also, here if result set is not true, then you have to check your database connection. It's probably broken. So yeah. So what does this? Uh, wait, when you execute this, what happens? Index.php, and I've, I've written over here. Say lip.sl. Uh, okay, lip.sl, and I register now, and this is what happens. Now we talked about this. Why does this not happen? Why is my um, this thing giving an error because uh, you know I've, I'm running the program on localhost so I can't actually send actual email addresses so, and if I can't send actual email addresses it uh, you know I can't show you what is happening so anyway if you have a server if you have you know an actual server online on the internet then you can actually run this program and it will actually work perfectly and here is the random code which you generated and here is the email ID so yeah in the next tutorial we're gonna check out confirmation.php and you know see what is happening over there so thanks for watching guys see you soon